Hey guys, what's good? I know it's been a long time coming. Finally, we're here. Finally, we're here. It's the Formerly Movement Presents the If I Speak podcast. Uh, this is the first episode. That's a whole lot of mouthful. Ever. That's a mouthful. Uh, it's really a lot of stuff to say right now. Um, so we're just gonna. So you guys know it's under the Formerly Movement umbrella. But it's just if I speak, you know, if I speak show. If I speak show, forget podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Hey guys, what's good? It's Janaid, aka Born Ready. And welcome to the If I Speak show. You know the show where we make things uncomfortable because that's where we make the most progress in life. You know, when we're uncomfortable, our backs literally against the wall. No, we ain't got no choice but to move forward. Um, yeah, so this is the first episode, guys. I'm just going to give it to you. Um, I, I'll be real. I have to be real transparent with you guys. I find transparency is the best thing in this life, you know. Uh, I've recorded some episodes previously. So if I, look like, if I look older in the first episode than I do the second, third, and fourth, it's because I recorded them earlier. But I, I just wanted to get this intro episode out to you guys first before I release that. I want to start with the birth of the Born Ready movie. So, like, uh, why why this came to pass? We have um, we have to go back to the beginning. So, in the beginning, it was Born Ready Fitness. Um, I I've been a personal trainer since like. 18 years old, 19, I got qualified, I think, something like that. Um, went to play basketball, came back, and just been personal training ever since. And then at some point, like, it just clicked to say, I'm going to be working class the rest of my life because if I just wake up, go to work, come back, like, I had to, you know, like, really work on monetizing my skills, monetizing my brand. And starting something that's going to bring me financial freedom. Because, you know, this is all what we're really doing it for. And when I tell you that I've been a personal trainer since 18, 19, I'm 30 now. So you imagine that this dream hasn't been that 12 years in the process. It's something like six, seven years in the process. Um, Just around the time I had kids. Ain't that crazy? I had a revelation when I had kids. But anyway. Um. So yeah, started off as Born Ready Fitness, and then as it developed over time, as I was perfecting my craft and everything, I realized I'm just going to be stuck in the fitness industry, and I don't really particularly like the fitness industry. Let me explain. I don't like that. I I don't want to just wake up, eat, sleep, drink, and live fitness. I'm about self improvement. I'm about being on your purpose. I'm about hitting goals. And of course, that is highly relevant in the fitness industry because you want to reach your physical goals. But for me, it was a mentality thing in the aspect of deciding you want to do something and then doing it and working hard at it every single day to maintain, improve. That skill. Is transferable from the gym to real life. I'll give you a prime example. Um, I wasn't the most athletic basketball player ever. Anyone that's known me um, longer than the past five, six years knows that. Knows that. You know, in my junior years, I was slim, short, couldn't jump, but I had skill. I could dribble the ball well, shoot decent time. That was all that. But when I went overseas or, and when I played like people that were better than me, older than me, um, I realized the biggest gap between us was athleticism. So, wow. Like, these guys are, are like the Americans on, on TV. Like these guys can actually like, jump out the gym. <clears throat> I didn't have that. So I went into the lab, I bust my butt and then the rest is history. So once I developed Born Ready Fitness and um, a couple years back, 
around, I think, like, eight, late 2018, early 2019, when I decided to change it to the Born Ready movement. This is what this was a turning point for me because it was just be like, well, once I decided to, I was going to do something, I did it. And it wasn't just after playing basketball, it was before playing basketball. I was like, wait, hold on. Okay. Yo, I, I literally was born ready. I weren't born ready back at 19. I was born ready. I came out the room and I was born ready. I remember when I was, um, I think I was, I was in reception. So I was about four or five years old. And at that age, every, everyone and their mum was tying my laces. I was a hyper kid. I just wanted to play out all the time. And um, my brother, he, he taught me how to tie my laces. But it didn't really make sense to me until I was told, all right, if you want to play out, you have to tie your own laces. It's like, what? And it's, times were a lot different. You know, like, like now, nowadays, like kids playing out is a, is a bit like a myth. But back when, you know, you go back 20, 25 years ago, um, we was in and out the house so much. And, you know, your mom would be like, stop. Stop the in and out business. Stop the in and out business. Rare, rare, rare. So me being in and out, and I'm, again, I'm like four or five years old. I was doing too much in and out business, and uh, that would just annoy my mother and to the point where she said, "All right, you're not playing no more. You're not playing out no more." Because every time I'm coming in and out, I'm taking off my shoes and putting the shoes on. She's like, "She's doing my laces." She's like, "You ain't playing out no more until you tie laces." And then I decided, well, I want to play out. You've given me the terms and conditions. Cool. I'm, I'm going to do this. I sat down, it took me all of like five minutes and I tied my laces and I was out. I was, I was so excited. I was so excited. Like, oh my gosh, can I play out now? I went out and I started playing out. And um, that's, it may seem like an insignificant story, but hold so much value in it because that mentality to decide to do something, executing it and then achieving it, that mentality there is what, you know, brought about the ball movement. movement which is where we are today. <laughs> that was a very long intro. Um, so, yeah, that's the Born Ready movement, origins and everything like that. Uh, I weren't born ready at, at 19. I was born ready. I came out the womb and I was born ready. No, the, the, the show's not finishing right there. I do want to keep it short because it's the first episode, but we're not going to finish just there. So t- today we're going to talk about self-love, self-appreciation, because... <clears throat> I feel like that's a great place to start, so I'm starting there. Uh, when you decide you want to do these things, and it could be, uh, it could be sport related, it could be you know academic related. You you could decide to be a window washer. Um, along the path, you're going to face adversity, and there's times where you're going to feel like oh, I can't do this, and blah, blah, blah. self love is going to play a major role in there. Because nobody's going to check for you harder than you are going to check for yourself. Growing up, I thought, I thought I loved myself. I figured it was enough for me to just want the best and go and get the best. I, I thought I loved myself, but I realized that, especially growing up, now I'm much older, how much neglect I was showing my body. Uh, how much neglect I was, you know, doing to my mind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I wasn't really loving myself on a vanity scale. Yeah, I've always loved myself, but I didn't really love myself. You know, there's um, a lot of times I would break my back just so another person can walk over me, and I felt just because I was fine that I was loving myself. I was okay. Mm -mm, It's not a thing. When you really start loving yourself, you start doing things a lot different. You stop compromising your beliefs and what you stand for in the name of pleasing somebody else. There's There's a lot of times where, like, I've never been, like, a fan of, like, going out raving or anything like that. But I compromise. Well, I say never. When I was young, 16, 17, 18, those were yeah, my prime. Like, I, I love going out. I love raving. But it got old real quick. 
um, didn't really serve no purpose after 18. <laughs> that's because that's when I went abroad. But yeah, um, as I got older, I, Raven just didn't be, be my, become my thing. But I would do it. People would assume, because I'd have a good time and everything, that like, I love Raven. I really did it. Um, like, I'm such a homebody, it's not even funny. But because I enjoy myself when I go out my house, people assume that, and then they ask you out more and more, and then, uh, yeah. But I'd often compromise, all right, cool. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do these things to please you in the hopes of return, I'll get some gratification for it. Or you would show me some sort of love in, an, in another way. And this isn't just like women related. This is like my friends or family, someone's birthday or whatever in it. Now, self-love means that if you do not want to do something, same way I'm saying if you want to do something, you go. If you don't want to do something, you do not do it. And that's, that's the difference I realized that I did not love myself in the sense that there's a lot of things that I did that I did not want to do. Um, so when you're on this journey of self-love, I'll tell you a couple of things you're going to, you need, you need, you're going to expect, you're going to lose some, you're going to lose some friends. And, and that's okay. Because if our friendship is, Determined by whether that we do everything together, or you draw me out, and I, I say, yeah, if if it if my friendship if our friendship is contingent on that, I don't need that friendship because I have a good time going to the gym. If you don't come to the gym with me, I don't hold that against you. I still love you as a friend, you know. Um, so on the flip side, when I say, ah, oh, no, I'm not really feeling this, you're gonna hold that against me. You stop our friendship. I, ooh, it says a lot. It's, you know, it didn't even cost me no money. I've lost some friends, but it's cost me a lot of money. You know, um, you ever given someone some money? I've I've given someone a significant amount of money, um, a lot, and obviously I didn't get it back. But we live and we learn. But to that, I just say I spent X amount of hundreds of pounds to get rid of a toxic quote unquote friend. So the social standards dictate that if we are friends and uh, we have one thing in common, we have to have all things in common in order to remain friends. That's not true. Social standards also dictate that if I love myself too much, I'm vain or, or big-headed or cocky. Women love that word, cocky. I hear it all the time. Oh, you're real cocky. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, do you, wait, no, do you know what? Cockiness is just confidence without the stuff to back it up. So I could never be cocky because I know myself and I know my limits and I know what I'm willing to do. No, um, I'm not going to say who. <clears throat> I'm not going to say who, but uh, someone real close to me said, um, I asked him, I was like, are you not scared of like, the repercussions? He's like, no, nah, man, because you know what, yeah? I might have my thing on him, he might have his thing on him, but I'm willing to use mine. That's just not something I wanted to hear. But yeah. And that's confidence. I know what I have in my arsenal. Give a damn what you have in your arsenal. That's cockiness and confidence. Uh, self love and vanity, they also get they also get put in the same boat. Like you love yourself too much, you're vain. And stuff, but there's a major difference. I'm gonna wake up every day and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell myself I'm beautiful. Well, yeah, I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. Handsome's more masculine. Um, I'm the poo. I'm that's it. I, like I am God's gift to the earth. Like I'm going to do that. And I will look myself in the mirror. I've I've got me right here. Like yeah, my imperfections make me perfect. No, like I got you know, spots on my forehead and everything. Like, I don't have a makeup team, so I couldn't, you know, hide the spots on my face right now. But my body is doing what it's supposed to do. Like, I'm getting spots in reaction to something. So it's op operating at optimum level. My skin is perfect. And I own it. Um, that word vanity, 
That is everything I've just said, but without regard for anyone else. Like, I'm going to call myself the best looking man in the world. But please believe it. I, I bring that same energy for anyone close to me. Like, Yo, look, cheese. You're looking fresh. Yes. Oh my God. Like, I will be your biggest fan. Because I don't want anyone around me to feel like they're anything less than perfect themselves. Like, what sense is it being the best or having everything and nobody to share it with, if that makes sense? Vanity, it, if, if you're going to love yourself and people are going to call you vain, let them call you vain, then that's a them problem. Love yourself. Encourage yourself. Be your own biggest fan. Vanity, that only comes like, when you disregard everyone else. when you turn your nose down at everyone else. There's a big difference. And anyone that's got something to say about you, that I, I'm gonna, I've got a word for them. This is one of those if I speak moments. But I'm going to speak anyway. You're a hater. You're a hater. The things you see in me, you wish you had in yourself. So rather than praise me for having the confidence that you don't, you're going to bring me down so I come back down to your level. You're a hater. I said it. I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I said it. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to chastise me for having the confidence in myself that you don't. Calm down. Be humble. Uh, yes, yes, Janade, we know you are the best. We know you're born ready. We know you're this. We know you're that. But this What? No one successful has ever been humble. That. That I don't know one successful person that is humble. Not one. If I'm lying, let me know. I'll bring up the way the way the internet works right now, you can bring up anyone's dirty laundry. And it's not even dirty laundry, it's just them not being humble. Um like how many rappers have said they're the greatest rapper alive, they're the best rapper alive? Where's the humbleness in that? There is no humbleness in that. Right. No athlete has ever said, oh, I'm all right. I'm, I'm just okay. No, like every athlete that, that turns up to their, um, to their discipline sport, they step on to that platform believing they are the best. If they didn't believe they were the best, they would stay at home. No one successful has ever been humble. All the humble people out there, they're not successful. They are potentials. And the only thing that's separating them from success is getting that, getting that humble. They need to get that humbleness, scrunch it up, throw it away. That's what they need to do. And that will close the gap between them and being successful. My skin is perfect. And I own it. Seven times seven is what? Two knows the answer. You all put your hands up. That teacher now has 30 students with their hands up. So, and she's going to pick someone at random. He or she. <laughs> she's gonna pick, I, I said she because my math teacher in secondary school was a, was a woman. Um, but they're going to pick someone at random. So... In effect, you have a 1 in 30 chance of being picked. You're going to have a 1 in 30 chance of showing that you have the um, mental capability to answer this question. And there's no repercussions for not knowing the answer. And she's not going to assume, you know, you don't, like, if she doesn't pick you, that you don't know the answer or anything. I'm pretty sure, I keep saying she. Don't get offended, guys. But I'm pretty sure that um, they know. Every student knows the answer, otherwise they wouldn't put their hand up. But my point is, you have a 1 in 30 chance of being selected. Like, do you think she's going to pick the one that says, no, she's not even going to notice you. And if everybody's got their hands up like this, like, oh, pick me, pick me, like everyone's doing the same thing. Um, the odds are, that, again, 1 in 30. The one that stands out and says, I ain't even put my hand up. 49! I didn't mean to shout at you guys, but 49. Yeah, cool. You might. I didn't choose you. 
So, yeah, but you, now you know I know the right answer. And she's going to remember that boldness. And you know what she's going to do? She's going to come back and say, like, okay, smart R, smarty pants. Wow. Okay, smarty pants. What's 12 times 12? 144. Four. Square root, 12. Divided by 3, 4. Now she, now teacher's testing you, pushing you further and further and further. But it was because you wasn't humble, it was because you was bold enough, you know, just to stand out that you are, now, you, now you're being tested. You know, and if you got the confidence, not cockiness, but now you got the confidence to back that up, okay, you're going to get the recognition that your peers don't. Because they didn't show that confidence. They wanted to remain humble. Or they, they wanted to be the same as everybody else. Just, just fit in. Like, yeah, they, man, you're chasing success. You're chasing a successful lifestyle. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing. There is nothing gratifying about being humble. There really, there really isn't. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, I suppose you have what being uh, what bossy. Um, that is not a a phrase. Bear me one second. Okay, okay. This is why we have the the, 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 the What we do, we just search urban diction. To be extremely boastful or over top of something, you have seen the new boy, he's bossy about him. To be extremely boastful or over the top of something. Okay, so we'll go with over the top. So I suppose on the other end, uh, on the opposite end of being humble, you have being bossy. Egotistical, insolent, luxurious, pretentious, proud, rich, showy. Showy, show off, cool. So yeah. Now you don't have to be all those things that I said to be the opposite of um hum. Uh, you don't have to be those things in order to not be called humble. So for example, I'm an award-winning recording artist. I have a couple Grammys, you know, a couple you know diamond albums and all of that. Don't ask me, oh, okay, cool. Like, oh, what are your achievements? I don't have many. That's me being modest. That's me being humble. But again, if I say what I actually have in my library, now that I'm not humble, am I being pretentious? Am I being boastful? Am I being a show off? No, I'm not. Let's call it like it is. I'm not going to dim my light so that others feel comfortable around me. If you feel uncomfortable around me, I must be doing something right. Like, again, it's one of those if I speak moments. If I speak, you know, people are going to feel uncomfortable. But you know what? I'm going to speak because, again, I cannot dim myself down. I cannot limit myself in order to make everyone else feel comfortable because that courtesy you are affording to everybody else will not be afforded to you. And when you go home at night and your mental health is affected because you spent the whole day being humble and modest, nobody was take, making sure that your well being was taken care of. And I'm not saying you have to tear down another person. No, I'm talking about be truthful about yourself. Be truthful about who you are. If you are, like if you are Usain Bolt, you are the fastest man in the world. You do not have to dim that down. You really don't have to dim that down. That doesn't mean go to the supermarket and be like, I'm Usain Bolt, I'm the fastest man alive. Fetch my grocery. No, that, that's not what it means. But it's like, oh my gosh, are you saying bold? Yeah, man, I'm just saying bold, man. You already know my credentials. I need to spit out to you. Yeah, I'm just saying bold. Yeah, man. Oh my gosh, let's take a picture. Come, come, let's take a picture. Yeah. I'll give you, uh, like, it's crazy because that, this is a true life story that happened to me. So I went to the trampoline park. I was on a date with a woman. And um, they had the basketball hoop there. I'm jumping off the trampoline and I'm doing all these dunks. And the kids are like, Whoa, wow, wow, wow. And uh, the, the woman I'm on a date with, she must have said, Oh, guys, don't. 
I'm like, leave them, man. They're enjoying the show. Let them have a good time. And she's like, you know, people get impressed about you doing these certain things. Like, it's just like, I'm just so used to it. Like, it's, just, it's not even a thing. Like, she actually said that, like, while while on a date with me that, you know, that I paid for, that I, you know what I mean? I don't impress you. Like, and this ain't, like, the first or second date. Like, we've been seeing each other for a significant amount of time. But in that moment, it's like, she considers me being a show off. Whereas, like, the trampoline is there for me to use. The hoop is there for me to use. If the kid next to me jumps and just throws it in, he's doing the best to his ability. Why shouldn't I do the best of my ability, especially if it's in the name of me having fun? I, I want to go up there. I want to spin a couple of times. I want to dunk it. If they find pleasure in that, why does that make you mad? In that instance, that woman felt uncomfortable around my shine. And if I were to be humble, I'd be in a toxic relationship right now with that woman. <laughs> if I'd just been like, oh, you're right, yes, maybe I should. Like, let me just... You ever watch Friends and see Russ do this? Let me just... No, we we must never, ever, ever, ever do that. We must never, ever do that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I went back and I dunked it even harder. Windmill that, man. <laughs> And I, I mentioned something about, you know, your, your mental health and how no one checks it. Um, no one owes you that courtesy. But it is nice when it happens. But um, it's real important that we do take care of our mental health. That is a significant factor in achieving success. Because you, it won't be all sunny days. Like, we live in London. <laughs> There'll be times when it's raining and it's cold. And I'm talking metaphorically. And you have to have the mental stability to persevere through those times. And again, like, this is why I have the symbol on ready. Because I want it to be a reminder to you that what journey you're on. And yeah, this is a tough time right now, but you need to remain centered. Be in the moment. Forget what's pending tomorrow and forget the hardships you went through yesterday. Just be in the moment. Just be right now. Okay, I have air in my lungs. I can see. I can hear. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm alive. Cool. There is something that I can do to change the future. Because it's always the future that we're really afraid of. You're in court and you're awaiting a verdict. You're scared that the verdict will go against you. But once that verdict goes against you, you're no longer afraid of the verdict because it's already happened. You're experiencing it right now. So we're always afraid of what's to come. Remaining centered is be like, okay, cool. What can I do to change what is coming? And certain things that are out of your hand, like the jury's verdict, that is out of your hand. There is nothing you can do. What is the point of worrying? main centered focus and take care of the things that you can take care of. I'll give you an example. Actually, no, I won't. I'm joking. I'm joking. This is one of those, if I speak moments, we'll be here for days, so I won't speak. And I'm trying to keep you guys attentive. I'm, I'm trying to keep you guys, I'm trying to keep you lots of attention, so we won't go there. Not now. We'll save that for another time. True value in yourself, even when others don't see it in you. I feel like after this pilot episode, I'm going to blow up. Some of you will watch this and be like, oh, no, 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 no. I see the value in myself. Like I said, this is the first episode. Normally I would have like a guest or something like this because I can't speak all the time. If I do, it's going to be a problem. So this is why I bring the guest on. So, so they speak and they vocalize. Um, I know the direction I want to go with this show. So I'm going to pursue that. But God, because I, 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 I see the true value in it. No one else may see that. You guys may watch this and feel like, oh, okay, nice try, but mm, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I will keep pushing. I will keep persevering. That is me seeing true value in myself that others may or may not see in me. 
what you see in me, what the next person sees in me, that doesn't drive me. I drive me. I'm born ready. You're born ready. What I see in you, and I, I see, I see, I see highliness in a lot of people. And some people you just can't help. This is one of those if I speak moments, we'll be here for days. So I won't speak. I'm definitely gonna have to break this down into multiple episodes because I'm pretty sure. Or maybe not. I don't know. Damn, yeah, I've been going for a long time. Like 40 minutes. So I might break this down into multiple episodes because I can't have you guys. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to watch a whole episode like this. But this, this, this you know, I'm, I'm excited because I wrote literally like uh, bullet points. And I expected like, okay, cool. I can match this out in 10 minutes. But for it to go on for so long, is like, okay, I've, I've definitely got gems here. I've definitely got, I've got content here. So, but yes. That will be all for today. Uh, going forward, um, I'll lay out some. Um, I'll lay out some contact information. I'll be inviting people in the show. I've already invited people in the show. I've invited a lot of people to do some projects with me. Some people don't take me seriously. Some people do. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the movie. So I'm going to do the show if I speak. I'm going to do um, fitness demonstrations. Um, the first one I've done is how to do a squat. I'm going to do short movies, real short movies, looking about four or five minutes long. Um, again, all promoting Born Ready, all promoting the movement, the mindset of Born Ready. And in terms of being on the camera, that's it. Those three things, the show, the fitness, um, master classes, and the short movies. But in all of those projects, I want to be working with other people, like other fitness professionals. I want to work on other people who have a voice. I've got loads of topics we can talk on. I'll be bringing on people that, you know, um, they have a lot more knowledge in certain fields than I do. So I think it would be beneficial if they come on. And in terms of the short films, I'm going to be doing a lot of projects with a lot of aspiring actors, models, whatever. Um, because. I was tired of waiting for an opportunity, so I'm going to create my own, hence the show, hence the Born Ready movement. I'm going to create my own. I'm going to create my own. I'm going to make it big enough, and I'm going to involve as many people as possible because we all deserve to have a platform on which we can catapult into bigger and better things, bigger and greater things. So, yeah. Um, as the show develops, I'll be leaving some contact information. Anyone that's interested in being on the show, anyone that's got any topics that they want me to talk about and discuss, just let me know. Um, right now, I'm working on a fortnightly schedule. Hopefully in November, there'll be a weekly schedule. And in the New Year's, once I've sorted out my life, maybe you guys get two a week. You'll get one where it's just me and one with a special guest. I'd love to give that to you guys in the New Year. But it's a work in progress. Bear with me. This is If I Speak, I'm Born Ready. Guys, see you later.